Panasonic have just revealed their full TV lineup for 2023, featuring some pretty exciting firsts for the brand, including one of the first MLA OLED panels to hit the market and their first ever mini LED. We took a trip out to Berlin to see it all go down and I've got lots to share with you. So let's get into it. It's fair to say that we are buzzing TV season is back. This week, we flew out to Berlin to attend Panasonic's launch event for their new TV models for 2023, and got some exclusive demos and a behind the scenes look at what the brand has planned for this year. The Japanese TV manufacturer is definitely pushing ahead with various upgrades and new TV tech, and the launch event revealed five OLEDs and two LCD models that will be hitting the market very soon. Though, I'm just gonna highlight that we will be covering the UK models in this video. Now, while there's been a lot of buzz around the flagship MZ2000 Master OLED Ultimate model with MLA, it's not going to be in everyone's budget. And we're pleased to say that there are some other exciting models in the rest of the range which might take your interest. The setting of the 2023 launch indicates Panasonic's core focus of delivering performance that is true to the filmmaker's vision, taking place at Atelier Gardens, a key part of Berlin's film and television industry. At the launch, they also spoke on their places used by filmmakers in studios and post-production. Plus, they worked closely with filmmakers when developing their new lineup with their TVs being fine-tuned in Hollywood. Color accuracy is something Panasonic are well known for, and this continues to be a core focus for the brand this year. And they continue working with Stefan Sonnenfeld, CEO of Company 3, who has applied his skills as a colorist in top movies including Top Gun and A Star Is Born. Panasonic's premium OLED range features the new HCX Pro AI processor, which, alongside Hollywood tuning, analyzes a picture and refines color accuracy, contrast, and clarity. It also delivers an improved filmmaker mode, which helps ensure you are viewing content as the artist intended. We also have ambient color temperature sensing, which ensures accurate colors by responding to any changes in the lighting condition of your space. So for example, it will lower the temperature if it senses a warmly lit space. The emphasis on color accuracy doesn't just apply to movies though, as another pillar for Panasonic this year is gaming, with the introduction of a true game mode, which takes the color accuracy features available for films and applies them to gaming. You can also take it one step further and calibrate true game mode with portrait displays, Kalman color calibration software, so that games look as their creators intended. Alongside source oriented HDR tone mapping, Panasonic support HDMI 2.1 features, including 4K, 120Hz, ultra low latency and input lag, VRR and AMD FreeSync. Another key way of showing their emphasis on gaming this year is Panasonic's new partnership with Activision, and Panasonic are also the official TV partner for Diablo 4. Joining us remotely at the launch event, John Mueller, the art director of Diablo 4, spoke about the importance of colour in retaining the nuances of the game, so the partnership definitely makes sense. Although it is worth noting that none of their models this year boast four HDMI 2.1 ports, as I know some of us were hoping. Instead, we've got two, with one being the eARC port as well. Now, an interesting move for Panasonic is their choice of operating systems. Unlike most manufacturers, they haven't just stuck to one, but instead have various operating systems throughout the range, including their My Home screen on their premium OLEDs and mini LED model, Android TV on their entry-level OLED, and Fire TV on their MX800 LED. It's not clear why they've taken this approach, but it does mean you could opt for a certain model if you particularly want Fire TV, for example. Right, let's take a closer look at some of the key models we saw at the launch event in Berlin. Kicking off with that MZ2000 then, which is available in 55 inches, 65 inch and 75 inch. Now, exact pricing for these models hasn't been confirmed, however we have spoken with Panasonic and we expect the 55 inch model will launch around £2,700 and the 65 inch model around the £3,600 mark, though these prices are subject to change. If you're not familiar though, MLA, otherwise known as Micro Lens Array, it's a type of technology designed to boost the brightness of an OLED panel. TV manufacturers are constantly looking for ways to enhance the brightness of their OLED panels, and MLA is a clever way of doing just that. Normally, you lose some of the light in a regular OLED panel through internal reflections, so 
MLA technology counteracts the issue by adding a layer of microscopic lenses to redirect the light that's reflected internally back out of the screen, which is firstly more efficient, but also helps boost brightness and improve the viewing angles too. Panasonic have described the MZ2000 as their best and brightest picture yet, which is expected to be a pretty major 50% brighter than last year's model, the LZ2000. Both the 55-inch and 65-inch models boast that advanced MLA panel from LG Display, but unfortunately the 77-inch model goes without MLA, which I know will disappoint some of you. We can only presume that the cost of the technology would have made the largest screen size too expensive right now. Now, it's tricky to tell in an environment like the launch event exactly how great this technology is, and we would need to get one in our studio to put our own content on it to review before we share our full thoughts. But on first impressions, the MZ2000 is definitely an attractive TV. In a side-by-side -side demo with last year's LZ2000, we could definitely see a noticeable step up in brightness in the white areas, plus there was less banding in the brighter areas in dark scenes, better control of color degradation, and better saturation of bright colors. The MZ2000 also features Panasonic's bespoke multi-layer heatsink configuration, which differs from the rest of the market with some unique technology. It allows for even higher lumens and of course reduces the risk of image retention and screen burning. Sound-wise, the MZ2000 features a Technics-tuned speaker bar with multiple built-in upwards firing, side firing and front firing speakers housed in the lower section of the bezel, which should give us a pretty decent Dolby Atmos audio experience to match the upgraded visual performance. I'm definitely looking forward to testing this out in our studio and hopefully putting it head to head with the LG G3, as I'm sure that's going to be an interesting comparison. Another key model for Panasonic this year will be the MZ1500. It's a step down from the MZ2000 and it says goodbye to MLA with its master OLED Pro panel, not ultimate. The lack of MLA will make this a more affordable model and we are looking at approximately £2,199 for the 55 inch and £2,899 for the 65 inch. Again, this is subject to change though. This model still features LG's Display OLED X panel, has the multi-layer heatsink, the HDX processor with filmmaker mode and true game mode, and is available in 55 inch and 65 inch variations. Overall, it will be a step down in brightness and a step down in sound with no upward firing drivers, but a dedicated front firing soundbar style design instead. This is likely looking to compete with the likes of the LG C3. So again, exciting comparisons to come. The MZ980 is another interesting model, available in the smaller sizes of 42, 48 and 55 inches and ranging from around £1,599 to £2,099. Again, this is still an OLED X panel, but it's not being classed as an OLED Pro and there is no heatsink in this model, so we're expecting a drop in brightness. Again, we still get the HCX Pro AI processor with this one, so it would make this a good option for gamers, especially with those smaller screen sizes. It is actually the model that Panasonic had for their gaming demo, so again highlights the positioning of this model in their range. Oh, we also saw that Panasonic have some clever audio settings for gaming, with a few different sound modes including an FPS mode which will help you hear enemies' footsteps easier, or RPG mode which will give a wider 3D soundstage. The final model I want to highlight today is Panasonic's first ever mini LED TV, the MX950. Not only is this a mini LED TV, but it also features quantum dot technology, so we should get impressive dimming controls alongside the better brightness levels we get with LED. We've not had any update on expected pricing for this model just yet, but we do know it will be available in both 55 and 65 inch screen sizes. We had a demo of this model and compared it with last year's premium LED option, the LX940, which wasn't a mini LED. From initial impressions with the prototype, we noticed the MX50 was much brighter and offered better saturation as well as better details in the blacks, but again, we are keen to get this one into our own studio for full testing. Of course, we are in need of some in-depth, real-world testing to truly see how these models perform and how they compare with the rest of the market, but from Berlin, it's clear the brand are pushing and looking to compete with the very best this year. So you'll have to make sure you subscribe to see how they fare when we test them out in our studio. For now though, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next one.